Uh, learning sprints are just a really targeted approach within the class to be able to adapt to the cohort in front of you and the challenges that you face. So it's teachers being able to collaborate together to identify specific actions that are going on in the class and then being able to work out outcomes and measures uh, and changes the practice that it can occur. And the whole idea is about teachers collaborating and you get the best uh, outcomes with the more you collaborate with uh, teachers. So if you identify uh, a learning need or maybe through your formative assessment something that there is a gap, uh, it might be a practice uh, that needs to change so you get together with those teachers and then there's a targeted outcome uh, in a really short space of time. One of the key aspects of learning sprints too that it's individual for the teacher. It's not a whole school approach, everybody jump on the same initiative. Actually it's purposeful for the individual and they get to choose an area that they want to develop their expertise in that's relevant for them and, and if we get teachers having ownership of that they become more engaged in their own learning development as well. I think also a lot of our students coming in today, failure isn't seen as an opportunity to improve and so you know it's building that resilience in learning sometimes you're not going to always understand what you're doing or experience success so it's about actually breaking down the why didn't i get that or what some areas of development or areas i need to improve on and i think that really breaks down the barriers and makes students actually become more accountable in their learning which for a lot of especially being an all boys school that's something we really need them to do because that's something that comes from them for us, uh, Agile means yeah, flexibility or being able to adapt to what's happening in front of us, to what we're seeing. So even day to day things might change, so we've got to change our approach, change our, um, our planning and, and adapt. Yeah. Uh, we've been responsive in my department by incorporating numeracy in collaboration with our maths department. So um, there was a need for our boys to get more numeracy, so we used a health and PE context to deliver some meaningful um, content around statistics and, and our kind of environment. Well, sometimes you just might not be interested in the uh, in the subject, and that can affect like the way you learn. If you can't be bothered, then you're not going to learn well. You're not going to pay much attention to the teacher. You're not going to try hard in class. It will just affect like how you learn and stuff. Yeah, I feel like if you're engaged in a subject that you really enjoy, uh, then obviously you'll learn a lot more and you'll develop more with your learning rather than if you're sort of you know not very happy with what you're learning then um, you're not going to pay as much as attention and um, not going to be as happy in class. We quite often share our sprints with the kids uh, in two week blocks uh, and we make, make them aware to the students so you know, skill development we say we're going to work on that for two weeks and this is what we want to achieve by the two weeks and then we go into implementation we let them know that the next two weeks we're focusing on this um, and that's, that's quite often when we do share with the learners. Yeah, one way we've used the learning sprint approach in health and PE is in preparation for our year nine camp. So we've decided on the key skills required of our students to be successful and basically split up uh, the unit, I suppose, in terms of deliberate planning and delivering the content um, to the boys at appropriate level to prepare them for camp. And then over in humanities, um, what we've done for the learning sprint is our big idea has been conflict this term. So we did a three week um, short, sharp, kind of focused um, unit on some, some area of interest for those kids. So they were able to work with different groups, not just their set classroom, and different teachers based on, uh, on the area of, of passion. So one of the ways we would gather evidence is at the end of the learning sprint, we provide like a feedback form, and it gives each student an opportunity to provide feedback on what's gone really well, you know, what was a challenge or what they noticed was different within this learning sprint or what they enjoyed. Um, but also another thing we'll try and focus on too is those informal conversations that you have whether you're working with a small group or someone one-on-one. -on -one. And I think probably the biggest thing is recognising how vital they are and how important sometimes that feedback can be. And it's writing it down or taking it on board as, as not an individual thing as you as a teacher, but an opportunity to grow, obviously to suit the child. Yeah, so I guess one way um, we're able to, to gather greater evidence um, from our students is due to our extended uh, learning blocks. So the move to 100 minutes just allows us to deepen the learning across our, our curriculum. So that has been a positive shift uh, over recent years. And also I think it's important that it's about understanding the learner and knowing the learner. So priding ourselves on trying to recognise who that student is and how 
they best fit in the classroom. So how we try and cater within a learning sprint there is trying to provide every student with the opportunity to experience success. So whether that's say having a clear outline of what someone can do by the end of the lesson or by the end of say this fortnight or whatever, it's about letting that individual experience individual success in their own sort of however they are working as a learner.